morning. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. So what have you thought about doing in 2020 that would be impossible if God didn't do something? Have you thought about something like that? Or is it going to be just another year that we do all the things that we know how to do and we can do and uh, that's going to be enough that we celebrate next time around? I don't know about you, but I would like to be a part of something that only God could make happen. So before I continue, let's not forget to pray for our team that's in Bosnia. They've had, uh, if you're keeping up with their Facebook post, they've had some, uh, well, I don't know if you call them difficulties or challenges. How's that? We're talking about faith today, so maybe it's just a way of God uh, increasing their faith muscles and, and, and making them bigger. But I want to tell you a story. So we're, we're pretty much a uh, sports community. We, we love our sports. We love the Rangers. The, uh, well, we used to love the Cowboys. Um, you know, the, they used to say when, when the stadium was in Irving that the reason why it had a hole in it is because the phones ring everywhere, but the, the, that God only answers in Irving, right? But now he only answers or used to answer in Arlington. But uh, they need to do more than just pray, I think. Uh, when we arrived in Argentina in 1996, it had been 19 years since I'd lived there as a, as a child. I graduated from high school there, but uh, I grew up a Boca Juniors fan. So think about being a Cowboy fan, and you finally come back to Dallas, or, or, and you're in the Metroplex, and, and so you're like, I, I would love to go see a game. So we lived in a city of La Plata, about an hour south of Buenos Aires. And uh, I wanted to go to a game, obviously. And every time I went into town or went back home, I would drive by the stadium. And so I prayed one day. I said, Lord, uh, you know I want to go real bad, but I'm not going to go until you take me. Have you ever trusted God to take you to a Ranger game or a Cowboy game? Did you know that he even cared about you going to a Ranger game or a Cowboy game? Well, time went by. I'd been told about this referee, uh, linesman, uh, Christian, Dario Garcia, and I'd been told that he and I should meet, and so one day I finally got his phone number, gave him a call. He didn't live in Buenos Aires, but he said, David, I'll be in Buenos Aires uh, to ref a game. Why don't you come to the hotel? Let's meet. I said, well, sure, that'd be great. So I went into Buenos Aires, past the stadium, and uh, we sat down, had coffee there at the hotel, and we in enjoyed getting to know each other. And he said, hey, I'm going to go do the game at Boca Stadium. You want to come? <laughs> of course. So we get into the police car together. We go to uh, the stadium. They open the gates, of course. No ticket. I get to go in ushered into the referee's locker room where the president of the club came down to check on things and he said um, everything okay shook my hand I said of course everything's fine after that they took me while the refs are getting ready they took me through the tunnel and I came up at midfield at, at half you know, halfway line saw the pregame from the tunnel or from the right there on the field um, then before the game started they took me to some really nice seats and I saw the game. We won. And then I had to connect back with the referee, with Dario. And on my way to see him, I got to take my picture with uh, one of their great stars. So on the way home to La Plata, about an hour's drive, I got really excited. And I said, God, I love going to the stadium with you. Thank you for taking me to the stadium. My point in telling you the story is that so many times we do things within our own power but if we were to just wait and we were to trust that God is at work, he wants to do things in your life that you couldn't do for yourself. So sometimes we settle for less. Sometimes we, we just don't get all that he wants to give us because we think, oh, I can go to the stadium. So we buy a ticket and go. There's a Barclay, William Barclay wrote, 
about Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. We'll look at that in a little bit. But he says, to the writer of Hebrews, faith is a hope that is absolutely certain that what it believes is true and that what it expects will come. It is not the hope which looks forward with wistful longing. It is hope which looks forward with utter certainty. It is not the hope that takes refuge in a perhaps. It is a hope that is founded on a conviction. He continues and says, In the early days of persecution, they brought a humble Christian before the judges. He told them that nothing they could do could shake him because he believed that if he was true to God, God would be true to him. Do you really think, asked the judge, that the likes of you will go to God in his glory? I don't think, said the man. I know. So as we look into 2020, my hope is that this morning and throughout the course of this week, you will be convinced deep conviction that God is who he says he is and that there's nothing that could change that so that you and I would attempt things that on our own are impossible but with him everything becomes possible so here's another story in 1995 we were appointed with the IMB and went to Argentina but before we were having dinner with our regional leader in Richmond Virginia and during the course of dinner I said um, so what are vacations like for missionaries is there such a thing and uh, he was looked at me kind of with a peculiar face going that's a weird question nobody ever asks when they're gonna go serve on the mission field what what are vacations like well I had to quickly explain so he didn't think I was just going to go take it easy that uh, I, in 1998, three years later, would be the World Cup in France and so I wanted to find out uh, if there would be time for that. We were appointed as sports evangelists so he said, well, surely that might be able to be uh, ministry related but he dismissed the question. We arrived in Argentina in October of 96 and, and I began to speak at different places and I, I remember um, that one of the questions that always came to mind to ask the groups of students and 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 other folks uh, adults as well what are your dreams so as I'm telling the story I want you to think what are your dreams for 2020 so this was a crazy dream that I had but I listened to their dreams and and believe it or not most of them were things that they could achieve on their own the verse of scripture I'd use is delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Well, after they would share with me that they wanted to get married or they wanted to go to college or the, just simple things like that that, you know, seemed like could happen in a normal life, I said, you know what my dream is? I want to be the chaplain for the Argentine national team in the World Cup in France. I can't make it happen. I don't know who to talk to. But if God wants me to be there, he can make it happen. So I kept sharing that. Some people would react this way. They'd start laughing. Ha! Ah. Others would go. But others would say, hey, let's pray. Let's pray to God. He can make it happen. They'd pray with me. Well, guess what? Two weeks before the World Cup began, the phone rang at the house. My wife, Deborah, who's such a faithful wife now here's the difficulty about this story she'd always wanted to go to France and when we were dating she had an opportunity and we were getting kind of serious I said sweetie please don't go stay so now I was going to go to France before she did so it was kind of expensive if you know what I'm talking about in our relationship thank you sweetheart so sure enough our, our regional, our, excuse me, our field supervisor said, David, I don't know what's going on, but I've been told to tell you to get a ticket to France, go to the World Cup, and, and we'll cover all your expenses. Wow. So that was how God was getting me there, but now the chaplaincy part, I didn't know how he was going to do that. Well, 
It turns out that a seminary student in Buenos Aires knew one of the players, and he, that player had made a profession of faith and was not really living it, but, but he was close to the Lord. So um, I was able to reach out to him, and uh, during, so I flew to France, and by the way, I rented a car, and uh, I spent eight nights in the car because there were no hotels available because it was so many people. So God may give you what you'd like, right? The big picture. You got to work out the little pictures. So sure enough, um, it was difficult. The training there, there, there was a big fence that separated us from the, the, to be able to see practices. So security was high and all that. And the only place that you could maybe communicate with a player was with us. It was a five-foot fence. And... Um, there was no there was no way to get across but anyway when the players and coaches would go to the press conference we would um, I was able to say hi and I would hand Jose a, a devotional thought that I'd written and I'd hand it to him and when he'd come back out of the press conference he would say hey thank you so much and so we began to develop a relationship took gospel tracts gave them to him and and he was able to distribute those and to this day, we're, we're still in touch. But the point is, is that God gave me the desires of my heart. He completed the ability. And years later, uh, to, in 2003, after the 2002 World Cup, I was in Madrid and was able to be with Jose and his family and worship together. But I want to, I tell that story to encourage you. What would you say is your dream? What is something that you could not do for yourself that God might just be wanting to say, yeah, I'll do that. So let's go to Scripture. Uh, go to Matthew chapter 14. It's a great passage there. Have you ever wanted to walk on water? You know, a lot of people take selfies, or actually it's hard to take a selfie doing it, but they stand in a little bit of water and make it look like, I just saw one on Facebook the other day, it made it look like they were standing on water. Well, Jesus uh, actually walked on water, and so did Peter. Let's pick up in verse 22. It says, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, came toward Jesus. <laughs> but when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. I think your being here this morning is, is a testimony that you're either saying this in your heart, Truly, Jesus, you are the Son of God. You either believe that or you're struggling with it, but your very fact that you're here today, I think we could conclude that that, that is something that is probably true in your life. So let's back up. If we already know that to be true, man, my wish for you and for myself is that we would not live 2020 in the boat. That we would have the courage to say, Jesus... One, that we wouldn't be afraid when he approaches us in whatever way he chooses to approach us in this next year. Don't be afraid. 
But don't worry if you are terrified, as it says here. Uh, guess what? He'll say, it's okay, it's me. And once he tells you that and you know it's him, would you dare to say, Jesus, call to me. And when he says, come here, jump out of the boat and walk toward him. Now we can learn from Peter, don't take your eyes off of Jesus. But if you do, know that it's okay. Because he's going to reach down and he's going to pull you up again and again and again. This story is awesome to me. I heard a message about this, and it's always touched me. Because you know what? Those of us who jump out of the boat sometimes, we're kind of those that people think are nuts, right? They call it in a nice way. They say they're out-of-the-box thinkers. So I want you to be an out-of-the-boat thinker in 2020. How's that? Yeah. Come on. There's another passage of Scripture. It's kind of long, but I think it's worth reading, and it's Hebrews 11. Because, see, the, the definition of faith is pretty interesting. Barclay pointed to this, but it says in verse... Uh, beginning in verse 1, chapter 11 of Hebrews. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, an assur for, hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what, we, what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did by faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings and by faith Abel speaks even though he is dead jump down to verse 13 all these people were still living by faith when they died they did not receive the things promised they only saw them and welcomed them from a distance admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth pause there remember in 2020 that we're just passing through regardless of what happens in the nation and in the world remember that our allegiance is to Jesus and his kingdom don't allow the waves and the winds to distract you from that truth stay focused People who say such things, verse 14, that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of a country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And then jump down to verse 32. Verse 32, going forward, is pretty, yeah. It draws my attention because I've never experienced a lot of these things. But I believe by faith, if we were to step out in faith, maybe we could be those that they could say these things about. Verse 32, it says, And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to re be released so that they might gain an, an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. Then great words in verse 38. The world was not worthy of them. 
They wandered in the deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. The world was not worthy of them. What if in 2020, when we're standing here about to welcome 2021, it would be said of us as a church, as individuals, the world was not worthy of them? Wouldn't that be a big step of faith to do something that was outside of our control? So what are your dreams for the new year? Better job, more stuff, better house. I would challenge you, and I challenge myself, our family, that we would be a people that's, that longs for God to do something in me and through me that would change my family, my neighborhood, my city, my state, my nation, and the world. Why not? If we really, truly believe that God is who He says He is, if we really believe that He can do anything, why would we not attempt to say, God, this year I would like for you to do blank? So as you welcome in the new year, let it be a different year. Let it be a year that's not just another one. Is there anything you're thinking about? So I'm going to add, I'm going to give you a few things. What if instead of just going to a game, we prayed for the salvation of the players? Because if we really buy their jerseys and all that stuff, we'd really like to share time with them in heaven, right? Because we'd hate for them to miss it if we wear their shirt. Do you see what I'm saying? Hello, did that hurt? What, what, what if child abuse was no more, not just in our zip code, but in our city? What if it was no more in the state? In other words, allow God to use you to change something that is outside of your ability to change. That only through Him could you change it. In Isaiah it says chapter 60 verse 18 no more will violence be heard in your land what if God could use us as a church and as individuals so that that could be true in 2020 I don't know about you but I get excited but since we're all human and we have a difficult time sometime with faith I, there's a few people here that I'm going to close and read these things to you Great persons in the Bible, but guess what? They struggled with their faith. John the Baptist, the famous wilderness preacher who was sent to prepare the way for the Lord, started out confident and certain. When talking about Jesus, he said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And I've seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. But when he found himself in jail, he questioned if Jesus was really the Messiah. John sent his disciples to ask Jesus if he was the one. Jesus answered with evidence so John could hold fast to his profession of faith. The father of a sick boy. Here's a father with a son who's mute and has seizures. He takes his son to the disciples of Jesus to be healed and comes away no different wrestling with his faith he brings his son to Jesus asking if Jesus can help Jesus points to his faith but knowing he's wrestling with his faith the father responds honestly he cries for help to win his unbelief and Jesus brought the victory Jesus will help us all win our wrestling matches by his grace then there's Gideon 
Israel was in trouble when God approached Gideon, declaring him to be a mighty warrior and calling him to save his people from the Midianites. But Gideon balked at the words and, and the call. Gideon was, Gideon was wrestling with his faith with similar questions to those we deal with. He wondered, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? He felt God had abandoned them, but cried out for favor. Gideon's appeal for grace was answered abundantly, and he fulfilled his mission as led by the Lord. Abraham is known for the, as the father of our faith. Abraham's faith until, I, uh, until he learned how much he wrestled with it and how the wrestling didn't stop from receiving, he didn't stop him from receiving from God. The Bible tells us that because he believed God, he was made righteous. There's Elijah, there's Moses, and there's so many others. We're going to struggle with faith. That's part of life. We can read it through Scripture. What I hope this morning we can come away with is don't live life normal. It's okay to be a little crazy. It's okay to attempt or dream about doing something that hasn't been done before. Jesus says, greater things than I've done you will do. And he also says, things that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard are the things I've prepared for those who love me. Do you love Jesus? Guess what? He wants to give you something that no one has ever heard of or seen. So as we step into 2020, my hope is that you will attempt something, that you will allow God to use you to do something that has never been done before. Don't Google it. It's not there. It's not there. My hope and prayer is that all of us would allow God to use us the way he dreamt when he formed us and shaped us in our mother's womb. It's a great song that I think speaks to this today. And it's uh, from Casting Crowns, The Voice of Truth. Let me read the lyrics. It says, oh, what I would do to have the kind of faith it takes to climb out of this boat I'm in onto the crashing waves. To step out of my comfort zone into the realm of the unknown where Jesus is. And he's holding out his hand. But the waves are calling out my name and they laugh at me, reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed. The waves, they keep on telling me time and time again, boy, you'll never win. You'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says, do not be afraid. The voice of truth says, this is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me, I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. Oh, what I would do to have the kind of strength it takes to stand before a giant with just a sling and a stone, surrounded by sounds of thousand warriors, shaking in their armor, wishing they'd have had the strength to stand. But the giant, he's calling out my name, and he laughs at me, reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed. The giant keeps on telling me time and time again, boy, you'll never win. Boy, you will never win. But the stone was just the right size to put the giant on the ground. And the waves, they don't seem so high from on top of them looking down. I will soar with the wings of eagles. When I stop and listen to the sound of Jesus singing over me, I will choose to listen and believe the voice 